having a humble beginning of starting as a language that was intended to handle browser validations to a full-blown programming language that powers a lot of desktop applications as well, JavaScript has traveled a long journey. It's important to understand this journey of JavaScript to work with the trickiest parts of the language. Let's start from where it all began. Well, many years ago, back in 1995, there was a browser called Netscape Navigator. Uh, sounds like a story already. The internet connectivity then was rather very slow as people used to use dial-up connections using telephone lines and modems. Yes, the modem was that same device in your computer that used to produce a horrible sound like this. So when you were supposed to fill a form on a website, which was usually coded using a language like Perl, the validation of any form's input fields required a full round trip to the server. This was a painful exercise as the internet speed was plotting and resulted in data loss if the form was filled incorrectly. Netscape Navigator had a brilliant idea to solve this problem by finding a way to validate the input fields on the client side that is within the browser itself. This is how JavaScript was born, merely as a scripting language to validate forms on the client side. Now the birth of JavaScript gave rise to a birth of conflict as well. Let's see how. Brandon Eek, then a developer at Netscape Navigator, was assigned to develop this new scripting language, which was named as Mocha. Mocha was intended to be released as a part of Netscape Navigator 2. Mocha was later renamed to LiveScript before the release of Netscape Navigator 2. Netscape Communications then allied with Sun Microsystems, which was then really pushing hard for promoting Java. Just before the launch, LiveScript was renamed as JavaScript to bank upon the traction that Java was getting from the press and portray JavaScript as a natural extension of Java. Since Java was too complicated and was used for handling server-side tasks, LiveScript was a natural extension to Java to handle client-side tasks. This was supposed to be a companion to Java. Now JavaScript 1.0 was a huge success and internet adoption was increasing tremendously. So much so that JavaScript 1.1 was released along with Netscape Navigator 3. By now, Netscape Navigator had established itself as the leading browser in the market. At this point, Microsoft decided to infuse more resources into developing its own browser called Internet Explorer 3. Soon after the launch of Netscape Navigator 3, Microsoft released a new version of its web browser called Internet Explorer 3, which had an implementation of JavaScript. To avoid any licensing issues with Netscape Communications, Microsoft renamed its implementation of JavaScript as JScript. This adoption and aggressive implementation of JScript by Microsoft was going to prove a major leap forward for JavaScript. So by now, there were two variations of JavaScript floating around with no standardization in place. This was the beginning of browser incompatibility that we even see today. Unlike all other programming languages like C, C++, Java, etc., JavaScript had no basic standard. Since JavaScript had no standard and the industry fears were obviously mounting over it, JavaScript 1.1 was submitted to European Computer Manufacturers Association, or known as ECMA, for standardization in 1997. A technical committee was created to standardize the syntax and semantics of a general purpose, cross-platform and vendor-neutral scripting language. The committee consisted of developers from Sun Microsystems, Netscape Communication, Microsoft and various other companies. They came up with ECMA 262, which was a standard defining a new scripting language and a general purpose scripting language called ECMAScript. All the browsers had to adhere to create their own implementations of JavaScript based on ECMAScript. Now, various browsers have tried with varying levels of success and failure to adopt ECMAScript as a standard for implementing JavaScript. So is JavaScript and ECMAScript the same thing? The answer is no. Though you would often hear developers use them synonymously, 
they are very different from each other. ECMAScript is a general purpose scripting language based on the standards defined in ECMA 262 and not tied to web browsers. It is actually based on ECMAScript that a more robust scripting language like JavaScript has been built. There's definitely more to the story of ECMAScript and JavaScript, but what you know now is sufficient for us to move ahead. In this series of tutorials, we would talk about ES6, the sixth edition of ECMA 262 that was released in 2015, and how it proved to be the most important enhancement to JavaScript ever made. We will talk about more advanced concepts such as the implementations of JavaScript as we proceed further. Now I hope you liked this video and have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, consider hitting the subscribe button and pressing the bell icon as you'll be notified when I post the next video in the series and it helps the channel grow as well. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, peace.